Hey, I'm Sam and I do design. Today I'm going to show you Sketchbook on the iPad Pro. So I thought I'd do a quick video to show you the user interface of Sketchbook to get everyone up to speed and then we can start doing sketching tutorials at a later date. But I do think it's important to know the program first before you go and start doing some sketching. So we'll hop straight into Sketchbook. So we're in Sketchbook now and we've got different toolbars around the page that I'll go through before we start sketching. First off on the left we've got our pencils and our brushes and there are so many different ones you can choose from in Sketchbook but I always tend to go for the designer set. Now this is because it's just the style that I've got. I do recommend going through and trying all the brushes to find the style that you need but it just so happens that the style that I always go for is the designer set so I've got that pinned here and you can see there it's pinned. So first off, I use the Design Pencil Brush and I normally do that at something like a 2.9, 2 to a 5, so yeah, 3 to 5, something like that. And that's going to give a nice faint line so we can start doing some underlays. I've already got an underlay here so we can start going through and uh, getting sketching as quick as we can. But I'll go through all of the elements first before we start sketching. So at the top bar here as well, we've got all the different tools for image manipulation. So you've got things like your select tool, your move tool, your fill, and your uh, actions like the lips guide and the ruler. So that's great to use there. And then on the right hand side, we've got the layers panel. Now this is really important when you're doing digital sketching to use the layers panel as much as you can, because it means you can always go back and change the things that you've done afterwards. So I like to have a quick layer for a underlay or a rough sketch or anything like that. Then I'll refine that in a layer on top. And then I'll block down the main colors in separate layers each. So if I need red or green or blue sections, then I'll do separate layers for each of those. And then on top of that, then there's the highlights and shadows layers, and they're all on separate layers as well. So I can go through and change them whenever I like. So we'll start sketching now straight away. Uh, I've already got this underlay here. Um, I just want to get sketching as quick as I can, so I've sketched this quick underlay and I'll sort of show you the tools that I use as I go through them. In fact, if I bring this up, this is something that I've just done now. Uh, it's of an Apple Watch and I've used all of the tools that I will need to for the sketching stage, so I just thought it'd be great to go through and do that. So I'm essentially going to recreate that now. So first off, I've got the pencil brush here and I'm going to put it at maybe a three or a three and a half, something like that and that's going to give a nice uh, line shape here and straight away I'm going to put in the center for the ellipses. Now this is going to be the basis for, it's a bit big, this is going to be the basis for the sketch so I've put it in there and basically everything that we're going to do for the ellipses and the uh, watch band itself is going to be based on this particular line. So because it's flat like this I'm going to start putting in the watch face as well And you can see guys that I'm using the ruler tool here, moving it around. Now this is really important as well for perspective. This is the, what we call the horizon line. It's also the middle of the ellipses here. But what the horizon line means is that every single line in the image is gonna converge at some point with the horizon line. And this is really far away in this case, so I won't be able to show you in here. But essentially everything above the horizon line is going to start moving up this way and everything below it is going to start moving out this way. And that's really exaggerated, but what I can do is I can go in and start using stuff like this. And then here's where you can start to see it here. And a little bit here as well. So this is basically all of the lines done now. So what we can do is go into the ellipse tool and start working on the band. So. We'll line this up with the horizon line. Like we said, this is also the center of the ellipse. And if there was more perspective than the center line, as you can see moving, the dotted line moving around, the center line would move as you start to have things looking from the top down or from left to right uh, or from sort of a three quarters angles or something like that. It all depends on where that uh, center line of the ellipse is going. But for now, it's going to line up with the horizon and this one a little bit bigger and then finally the last band as it does a little loop 
Now the last one is only on the bottom half, so all I'm gonna do is just keep adding strokes on the bottom half and that's gonna give it more there. And you can see here, guys, that it's sort of roughly there. It's all a bit of an art, um, finding out slightly how things are going. And I'll just drop that back down because it's not quite the same, but that's fine. And then on this side as well. So I'm just going to start to fill in some extra details along here. And this is where the underlay really comes in handy. I mean, I could have drawn all this fresh, but it just would have taken so much more time. And I want to show you guys as quick as I can the sort of things that I'm doing. So again, line that up on the horizon line, sketching the back of the face, uh, back of the strap. Okay, now this is where the horizon line starts to come into play because I've got another center line here for the smart crown. What's it called? Yeah, whatever it's called, the smart crown dial and basically it's not the same as the horizon line it's going to be ever so slightly because like we said the more it goes up the more it's going to move along it's going to be ever so slightly at an angle which also means that when the ellipse tool comes in that's going to be ever so slightly at an angle as well so i'm going to come in here make sure that it's always on the center line that you've drawn for it it's going to come along here and over here as well. And there we have it. Okay, and then I'm also gonna come in and start to sketch some extra details. Okay, I've missed out the button. So that's gonna come in here. And the ellipse is gonna come in here. It should be slightly pointed in this way because it's below the horizon line. We've got it there. But to be honest, it's so close to the horizon line. I don't think it's gonna to matter too much. I'm gonna cheat and just leave it flat. Okay, there we go. So granted, I was sketching over an underlay, but that happens all the time in design. If you're not using underlays, you're not doing it properly. It's all about getting there as quick as you can. When you're doing your own design work, the underlay is gonna be more free flow as you're getting to grips with the idea yourself. But when you're doing existing products like this, there's no shame in having an underlay ready to go. So that's pretty much how far I take the sketch before I start to add in some block colors and start to add in some highlights and shadows. I'll save that for another video because I've been talking on for a little bit too long now. So in summary, we've got the brushes on the left, the different tools that you may need on top, and the most important side, which is the layers panel on the right hand side. Use as many layers as you can when you're sketching. That way you can always go through, delete things, change things, add things. So that's really important to get to grips with. So that's it for my process for sketching in Sketchbook Pro. Let me know if you wanna see me render this particular Apple Watch, if you wanna see me render anything else or sketch anything else, uh, let me know down in the comments. Stick around for my next tutorials. I'd love to go through some more in detail things with rendering. That's what I love most of all about design. So subscribe to see those and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.